a long ways to be here tonight. Omar Lugo from Alamance County, David Gleason from Guilford County, Jesse Berger from Harnett County is here with his kids and his wife. Diane Parnell here from from Rockingham County, thank you. Hal Nunn, my former counterpart down in Hope County. Thanks, Hal, for being here tonight. Thank you. God bless you. And Alan Swain from Wake County. Thanks, Alan, for coming out. You guys are dynamite. Yeah, but we got vice chairs as well. Thank you so much. All right. One more time, thanks a lot to the catering service from Apple House Catering up there in Stokes County. Thank you so much for the Knight family and, and, and their support for the night. Great meal. All right, our next speaker tonight is, is also running for the U.S. Senate. He's the last of our Senate candidates speaking tonight. His name is Ted Budd. He's from the 13th Congressional District, where several of us live. Yay! Ted was an outsider when he ran a few years ago. Ted was a gun store owner. Anybody in here like guns? Yeah. Thank God for guns. It's the way we protect the First Amendment. Is that right? There you go. All right, Ted Budd. Ted Budd has represented us well in Congress. Ted Budd is great with constituent relations. Ted Budd is great at reinforcing our current president, Donald J. Trump. Right? Yay! <laughs> current. Yep. He's taking a little vacation, but I promise you, he'll be back. Oh, yeah. He'll be back. So, I just want to introduce Ted and Amy. For uh, those of you that haven't had a chance to meet him yet, please take some time and pick his brain about the issues in Congress right now. He's up there fighting a good fight inside the Beltway. He's down here tonight, coming back out of a session. I don't know, anybody in here can imagine what it's like to work for Nancy Pelosi, right? Uh, Ooh, there you go. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he's going to turn it around. We need somebody in the U.S. Senate that's going to be a deciding vote. We can't afford to lose that burner seat next year. we got to have a winner. And Ted Budd is a winner. Please welcome him to the podium tonight. Ted Budd from the U.S. Senate. Yay! Well, happy birthday. Happy 245th birthday to the greatest country on planet Earth. How about Yay! That? I got a chance to meet a lot of you all out there, but in case we haven't met, my name is Ted Budd, and I am the Donald J. Trump endorsed candidate for U.S. Senate 2022. <laughs> yes, you are. Woo! So when I'm not out on the campaign trail and having great conversations with you all, I'm actually up and doing a real job, another real job, up in Washington, D.C., and you mentioned Nancy Pelosi. I don't work for her, I work for you all. Yeah. But when she's in charge of the House, she puts other people in charge of committees. So I'm on this committee that deals with banking, housing, and stuff, financial services committee. And my chairwoman, unfortunately, is Maxine Waters. Yeah. I tell you what, but when I have great conversations around my district and now around the state, I hear several concerns from you all. I hear concerns about the border. And with the border policies of the Biden administration, why are we apprehending and then turning loose 180,000 people every single month? Is that a concern of y'all's? And some of you all, maybe you saw the gas prices and tried to fill up your car and you didn't fill it all the way up on the way over here because we are at the highest gas prices in 14 years. But when you throw all that free money out there and you think modern monetary theory and Keynesian economics works, you throw all that money out there and what would Milton Friedman say But too much money chasing too few goods, especially when people are paid to stay home at work, stay home from work, that's going to cause inflation. And so that's what I'm worried about, this runaway spending. And I hear that you're concerned about it as well. And if you've got kids or grandkids or nephews and nieces and anybody from college or even master's level all the way down to our kindergartens, maybe you've heard of something we didn't even know about maybe two years ago unless you were paying really close attention, and that's critical race theory. Anybody heard of that lately? Mm-hmm. Maybe Mark Robinson will address that later on. Tremendously, tremendously concerning. But we know that it fails. We know that Marxism fails, and that's all it is, is a Marxism redo, and it's very, very concerning. And I was with Donald J. Trump at Mar-a-Lago a couple of months ago. And I had a great meeting with him. We talked about 2022, and I was on my way out of his office. He says, Ted, come back. I want to tell you one more thing. 
He says, we're talking about 2022, but I'm worried if we're going to have a 2022, we got to make sure that we have election integrity. That's the truth. Anybody for that here? Let me tell you why I can win. I'm a person of faith. 30 years ago this August, I met my wife a week before the collapse of the Soviet Union. I met her in Moscow, Kiev, Leningrad on a Christian mission trip over there. It was an amazing experience and what did we know, but we saw what the Democrats are trying to do, many in the Democratic Party are trying to recreate again. We saw it collapse under its own weight. So I'm a person of faith. I was born on a farm, grew up on a farm in Davie County in Advance, and it's still a Black Angus cattle farm and it's been a Tyson chicken farm before and still live there today. And that is the biggest industry in our state. It's not banking, it's not transportation or other important industries like y'all might be involved in, but it's agriculture, and I understand it. The other thing is I'm a small business person, and Jim, I appreciate you mentioning that, but 11 years ago out of bankruptcy, I bought out of bankruptcy a bankrupt, who goes bankrupt in a gun range under Obama? But I know somebody that did, and I bought it from him for pennies on the dollar, and my very first and my only customer was a local police department. And the training captain, well, I only had one customer, and it was the police department. The training captain went to me and he said, never underestimate the need of the public to have a safe place to shoot. So 50,000 customers later, and 50,000 great experiences later, it's been a great success. So I'm a small business person, and I know what it's like to deal with regulations. I know what it's like to sign the front of a check and not just the back of a check. And I know a lot of you all are small business owners as well. And the last thing I'll mention to you, is I'm battle tested. I came here to the 17-way primary the same time that Donald Trump came here. He had a big primary, I had a big primary. I'm an entrepreneur that's never run for office before until then, and so was he. Two years later, the Democrats tried to take me out. They outspent me two to one, but I didn't walk away. And I beat them in one of the worst Republican districts in the state by one of the best margins, and with a lot of your help. So thank you for that. Look, it's only 500 days. It's only about 500 days until November 8th of 2022. A lot of big decisions between now and then. But I want us to win it for conservatives, and I want to win it for the next generation. So thank you all. But I'm not done. I want you all to have a lot of applause, but not for me. But it's the friend that I get to introduce next. It's the one you all know as a fearless defender of the Second Amendment. He is known as the husband of of Yolanda. <laughs> oh, yeah, that gets the biggest applause, the husband of Yolanda. And maybe you all know him. You know him as a great Republican leader. You know him as a great man. Many of you all know him as a great, great friend. But it's my privilege to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Mark Robinson. <laughs> kids without being thoroughly embarrassed. So, as always, first and foremost, we're going to give thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for holding the rain off. Thank you for giving us this beautiful day. Thank you for putting us in the greatest nation on earth and giving us this wonderful freedom. God bless uh, the United States of America, and like I said, we give thanks to Jesus Christ, as always. Is this too loud? Yeah. 
Is this just a little microphone? Is it all? Are you still here? Yeah. All right, so what are we what are we here for tonight? We're here tonight to celebrate free. We're here to celebrate all the great things that we have in this nation. We are here to say thank you to God for giving us those wonderful, those wonderful freedoms. And we're here to be happy about all the things that we have. But we are also here for another reason. We are here to tell those folks that would seek to take our freedom and turn this nation into us. Socialist hell, hell hole. We're here to tell those folks, hell no, you will not. Because some God-fearing, American-loving patriots are going to stop you. Amen. You see, here it is. The news media, the kneeling athletes, the, the, uh, the blue-haired professors down at uh, all the colleges <laughs> who love to tell me, you know, you're wrong. This really isn't not a Christian nation. And really, actually, Thomas Jefferson was a deist. Then, then, you know, we don't really. There's separation in church and state. <laughs> you know, those are the voices that are loudest. They're the ones we hear about. They're the ones they put on television. They're the ones who won't let it go. You know, Facebook has got this thing out now where they say, if you know uh, an extremist, please call us. We have uh, someone that can remedy that. Or, you've been exposed to extremism. Have you been exposed to extremism? Call this number. And, I, you know, I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking to myself, what is an extremist? By Facebook standards, what an extremist is, an extremist is President Donald Trump who loved this nation, who loved God, who loved what was right. A, a God-fearing Christian patriot is an extremist to Facebook. But here's what's an extremist to me. Somebody just won't shut up about it. Ever. They won't shut up during the football game. They won't shut up when they're playing in a football game. They won't shut up when they're teaching math or science or reading. They won't shut up about it on television. They won't shut up about it on the commercials. They won't shut up about it when they're in a restaurant, when they're in an airport. They won't shut up about it. Why won't they shut up about it? Because they are determined to force socialism down your collective throats. They are determined to do it. I'm here to tell you this, folks. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to stand for it anymore. I'm not going to stand for this foolishness that we see going on right now. You know, they love to say, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for him to come out. So well, Mark Robinson's a homophobe. He doesn't like homosexuals. Did you hear what he said about transgender people? I haven't said anything about transgender people. The only thing I said about transgender people is this. You have the right to be transgender, but you cannot transcend God's creation. And you are not playing on the girls' team if you're a man. Yeah. When did freedom become insanity? That's my question. When did freedom become insanity? You have the right to express yourself any way you want, but you do not have the right to be insane. And wanting to play on the girls' team as a boy is insane. You cannot do it. You will not do it. If I have anything to do about it in North Carolina, it will not fly. And I'm not shy about saying anything about it. Not the two genders, two, count them, two. There's two sets of DNA, male and female, that's it. Exactly. Get your head at me. Where's WRAL? Well, Write that down. Get the quote. <laughs> <laughs> and here's, here's what else I'm not afraid to say. I'm not afraid to say that the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. Woo! The United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. And as far as this whole thing we got going on right now is something called critical race theory. Yeah. You see, critical race theory is a theory. But let me tell you the truth. And I want somebody that believes in critical race theory, I want them to use critical race theory to explain the story of Mark Robinson. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Because let's count it by the numbers. Mark Robinson was born in the South. Oh, Lord, the South. <laughs> you know, where the rebels run around and wave Confederate flags and hate black people. <laughs> Mark Robinson was born poor. Mark Robinson was born with an alcoholic father and a mother who had already had eight other children, would have one after him, and had a fifth grade education. Mm. Mark Robinson, if you have not noticed, is black. <laughs> Mark Robinson grew up very poor, looking at the world thinking he was less than what the world is. Now, in that story, somebody told me, said that some leftist guy says, you always say that you grew up yourself feeling less than. How do you think that's possible? That was possible because I was a child and had not, let, had not yet listened to the advice of my mother who told me I could be anything that I wanted to be. Once I listened to that advice, I stopped listening to that devil in my head that was telling me I was less. Nobody ever told me I was less than. I assumed that in my mind and once I threw that baggage off, I saw my life start to rise. And so critical race theory, how do you explain the poor black child, number nine of ten, with an alcoholic father and a mother with a fifth grade education. According to that theory, here's where I should be. Dead, in jail, a drug dealer, an alcoholic, or a wife beater, or all of the above. According to that theory, nowhere in that theory will they explain to you how in the world I grew up to become a United States soldier, and then a factory worker, and then a factory worker, and a, or then a small business owner, and then a factory worker, and, and, and college student, and now stand as the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. I challenge anybody who believes in critical race theory to get in my face and try to convince me that that theory is truth. It is not truth. It is a lie based on the. It is a lie based on lies from the pit of the. The pit of hell is what critical race theory is. It is a way to try to drag this nation once again back over to the far left, the extreme left of socialism, of extremism. For those of you all that don't know, critical race theory comes from something called critical theory. Critical theory comes from something called the uh, Frankfurt School. The Frankfurt School is a school that teaches Marxist thought. Critical race theory teaches Marxist thought, it teaches you that you're not responsible for your own actions. Society is. I know that's not true because I've looked at my entire life, my own life. When I made bad decisions, I got bad results. When I made good decisions, I got good results. And I know millions of people out there that did the exact same thing. So we've got to stand up against critical race theory. See, they think they got you with this whole critical race theory thing. Because if you don't believe in it, guess what? You're a bigot. You're a bigot and you, you, you can't, you know, you, you just don't say anything else to me because you're a bigot. Now I don't want to hear anything else you've got to say. That's the only reason why you don't like critical race theory. It's because you're a bigot. No. It's not that I'm a bigot. I have a brain. And I can think past the end of my nose. And I know what you're saying is foolishness. And I'm telling each and, one, each and every one of you out there this right now. Do not be afraid to stand up. The time for laying back has long passed, folks. You know, I can't tell you how many times I get messages from Democrats who say things like this. Boy, I sure miss the days of cerebral uh, Republicans like uh, President Ronald Reagan. Really? <laughs> Did you like Ronald Reagan? Because, you know, I was around and heard how you talked about him as well. <laughs> folks, it's not about what we say. Those folks have said, oh, you know, I really don't like what President Trump says on Twitter. You know, I'm just a little bit more concerned about what's going on in the, in the abortion clinic with these unborn babies than I am about what's going on with President Trump and his Twitter account. I'm a little more concerned about what's going on in our classrooms when you have these demons in there trying to teach our children about all this filthy homosexuality and transgenderism, trying to force it down their throats. I'm a little bit more concerned about them teaching them to hate America and hate policemen and hate law and order. What came out of Donald Trump's mouth was just a drop in the bucket compared to the trash that we see being forced on our children and on, this, this, on our society every day. How dare these folks on the left talk about President Trump has a foul mouth. 
have you heard some of the music you have been producing lately? <laughs> it's so filthy we can't even say the titles on television. You have the nerve to tell me that my mouth is filthy and I sound angry. You know, the other day on Facebook, somebody told me, said, I, you know, I think you lack a little sensitivity. I said, you know what else lacks sensitivity? Born an unborn baby part limb by limb in the womb lacks sensitivity as well. Mm -hmm. Forcing ideas on children in classrooms lacks sensitivity as well. Folks, it's time for us to stop being concerned about the names people call us. It's time for us to stop worrying about the virtual signaling uh, leftist weirdos on the other side and what they think, because I'm going to tell you something. They didn't build this country. They didn't build it. Guess who built this country? You built this country. Hard-working patriots built this country. Folks who got up off their butts after 9-11 and then sat around and cried about and went down to the induction center and signed up to go fight in our military. They're the ones that helped build this nation. Folks who fought in Vietnam and Korea in World War II, those who marched in the Civil Rights Movement, those are the people that built this nation. People who love our flag and love our nation and respect our Constitution and the men and women who serve us. That's who built this nation. Those blue-haired freaks that know a bit more to know anything about life than a man in the moon did not build this nation. Let me tell you something about the woke crowd. The woke crowd was asleep during Bible study, history, and economics. And it shows in everything that they push. And it's time for us to start pushing back against them, folks, because here it is. This is not a fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's not. This is a fight between people who love America and people who despise it. This is a fight between those who love capitalism and all the great things that it's bought and all those folks out there that think socialism is the greatest thing since sliced bread, even though, even though they have seen the evidence that it has killed millions in the 20th century and will continue to kill millions if we allow it. It has destroyed nations, destroyed cities, destroyed states, and the policies thereof have done the exact same thing. I'm standing here looking at two guys right here. Two guys in the audience right here who came from a nation that used to be one of the greatest nations on earth until they embraced socialism. Yep. And then it caused good men like Omar Lugo, Lugo, Lugo to have to flee <laughs> and come here to this place. Guys, we are the last domino standing. And you guys are standing on the parapet, ready to defend it. This is not a time for weak people, folks. People ask me all the time, why are you, you so angry? Why are you so demonstrative? Why do you talk so loud? I talk loud because I want people to hear this. I want you to hear this. When I say this, I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to our enemies. When I sit, at night, sometimes, sometimes I sit up in my loft. Some, and for those y'all don't know, I got a model train set. And gosh, I love that model train set. I was just talking to somebody else about that model train set. I go up there and work on that thing sometime, and then I sit back. And sometimes in my thoughts, what I often find myself thinking about are things that actually bring tears to my eyes. You know, not anybody in particular do I think about. I just think about myself. I think about how much I love my grandson. You know, I watch him run around. He's four years old now. And the funny things that he says and how he runs inside and hugs his grandma. And how he hugs me and how he calls me Papa. Just, you know, I, I love that kid more than anything. I never thought I could love somebody that much. Never. It's indescribable how much I love him. It's indescribable how much I love my wife and my children. It's indescribable. It's not something you can even tell somebody. You, you can't define it with a word so small as love. But then I think about this. I think about that mother and father who have that flag hanging in the window with that blue star on it. And their son or their daughter is far across the ocean somewhere. Far across the ocean. And then they get that... They get that knock on the door and they go and there's an officer standing there and there's a chaplain standing beside them. And they have to tell that mother, that father, that family, that, that blue star is going to turn into a gold star and your loved one's not coming home. You're never going to see them again, never going to hug them again, not on this earth. Now I think about the reason they did it for. 
The reason they did it is so we could sit here tonight. Now that sounds cliche, but that is the truth. That is not a theory. That is not some wild-eyed idea. That's not something that just exists in a John Wayne movie. That is the truth. Young men and women have given their lives for this nation. All the way from the beginning to this moment right now, they did it so you could sit in those chairs and listen to me right now. They did it so I could stand here and speak without some jackbooted thugs coming in here throwing chains on me and dragging me away. They did it so this nation could re remain free and strong and proud and brave. And when I think about it, guys, every time it brings tears to my eyes. The way people have sacrificed for this nation. And then to hear people say that this nation is not good enough. That this nation is less than. That this nation is racist. My God, where do you, what part of this country do you have to live in? Where are you at in your mind to say that this is a racist nation? Where? Show it to me. Bring it to me. Lay it at my feet. Any person that thinks that this is a racist nation, look here. I got a personal story to tell you. A personal story to tell you. I'm standing right here and I'm looking at all these different faces in here and I see people that don't look anything like me. Some of whom have embraced me in tears and tell me that they love me. And they don't love me because I'm a black man or because I'm a white man. They love me because we share a heart. We share a heart for this nation. Just as long as you're standing up for what's right. That's why we're here tonight, folks. We're here to stand up for what's right. Because we know what's right. And we have right on our side. And I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you, as you sit in those chairs, as you stand there, as you listen to me, you don't think this is a fight. All you got to do is turn on CNN for five minutes and your mind will be changed. And so what I'm going to leave you with here tonight, guys, is this. It's time to stand up and be strong. You know, I said for many years, if we had a president that would just stand up and say what needs to be said, he'd get something done. Mm -hmm. And we had one in number 45. Yep. We sure did. Woo! And he got some stuff done. Yep. Folks complained about how he did it, but I'm going to play a tale like this. Now is not the time to be soft-spoken and timid and afraid. Now is not the time to sit back and say, well, maybe we can negotiate. Now is not the time to put a pipe in the corner of your mouth and say, well, let's see what the book says about it. This is not the time for that, folks. We are in a, a battle for the soul of this nation, the literal soul of this nation. This nation is actually standing at a crossroads. Giant semi-truck called socialism is coming down the pipe. Now is not the time to look at that, look at our nation and say, uh, oh, you need to look out. Here's a truck coming. <laughs> now is not the time for that. Now is the time for us to stand up and say, wake up, America! Wake up! Mm -hmm. You are about to give away one of the greatest gifts God has ever given to humanity. humanity. You are about to give it away because you refuse to stand up like those who came before you. It is time for us to stand up, folks. It's time for us to be unafraid, unashamed, and unabashed with the truth that we have in us. And tell those socialist bastards who want to destroy this nation, you will not do it on my watch. You will not do it now. You will not do it ever. who survived the Middle Passage and the Potato Famine and who survived World War I and World War II and Vietnam and Korea and survived uh, and survived the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Folks who survived 9-11 and thwarted the efforts of those who thought they would bully us. I don't come from a weak and ineffective people. And if you want this fight, you bring it because we are ready. Because we don't back down and we don't give up. We will fight for the life of this nation, and we will fight for the future of our children. You don't believe it? You're going to get a lesson. The same way the British did, the same way the Germans did, the same way the Japanese did, the same way the communists did, the same way those terrorists over in the Middle East did. You're going to get a lesson in what free men will do to hold on to their freedom. So hold on to your hats, communists. Hold on to your hats, socialists. The patriots are coming, and you're not going to like it. Woo! Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.